Royce Unchained, presented by Josh Arnold, investment consultant, Mr. Money Talk. We will we'll get your Gopher football preview takes here in, in just a moment, but a sweep. The wheels are falling off the wagon here for the Twins. Carlos Correa may never play again. We're not sure. Uh, what's your what's your panic meter right now, Pat? Uh, one hundred percent. Uh, one hundred percent. This uh, this was a fragile. There was a fragile base uh, for this team, uh, and it all came apart uh, when Jorge Alcala uh, blew that game in Texas. You won three out of four down there. You didn't think it was a big deal, right? Because you squeezed out three wins before that. Well, that was the big sign that uh, the wheels were coming off, as we say. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, how are they doing this, was the question for three and a half months. And now the question is, are they going to equal the finish of the 2011 Twins when they uh, they ended up 19 and 50? Now, they can't do that, but are they going to have the same kind of... Uh, mid-August to the end of September collapse. Uh, and I, I think it's very possible. Um, you think about Correa, Judd and I were talking about this yesterday. What uh, what they said, what the Giants and the Mets both said is, we don't like that right leg. We don't like that right ankle, right? So yeah. last week, Carlos told us, we got to be care- more careful with this plantar fasciitis because it's my bad leg, basically, is what he said. So... Uh, uh, you got that. And then Buxton, last time Buxton got, uh, hurt his hip. Remember 2022, he was having a good year. Didn't he go to the all-star game that year? He was having a good year. And, uh, he didn't play after August 2nd because of the hip. And, uh, you know, they're saying, well, he's day to day and he'll be back anytime soon. Well, listen, he takes a swing. He walks back to the dugout and goes downstairs he knows something bad happened when he, uh, you know, on that play. And he, you know, he might be back, but you think he's going to be running around center field like he was before uh, before he walked off the field but for that bat? And then the pitching is just a disaster. Everybody they touched is stunk, right? But, hey, wait, don't worry about it, though. Justin Topa will be here any day now. <laughs> <Maybe help that. laughs> where, where, where are we ranking Trevor Richards on the absolute f- – when when it comes to like trade deadline acquisitions that yes. flamed out, he's got to be on the Mount Rushmore. Well, I mean, he was pretty. He was pretty. Last year they used him in big spots in Toronto, and he was okay at the start of this year. But there had to be some reason Toronto was going to. I mean, he'd been bad. He'd been bad this year, and there's Toronto saw something that they were willing. They, I mean, they were out of it, but they were willing to give him away, and I uh, but. As far as throwing, not throwing strikes, he rates right up there. I, I said to the guys yesterday, uh, way back when Joe Decker won 15 games one that year, and then the next year he couldn't keep it in the batting cage during BP. That's it's kind of like this. It was there was this might be the wildest guy since Joe had his nervous breakdown there in that uh, second season as a starter or third season as a starter. That's a long time ago, but it's uh, and then. Uh, Martin, one guy whose game hasn't changed is Margot. He was a hack in the outfield from the first day you put him out there, and he was a hack in the outfield last night. And that was not a double, that was a two base error. I know that the way we score in today's modern baseball, if somebody hits a ball, what we would we consider it to be good. Well, he had his it hit him in the middle of the glove and he dropped it. So, uh, but he's a hack in the outfield, man. He's been a little better. He's been a little better hitter than I thought, but he is terrible in the outfield. When did they become such a dumb baseball team? That's I my know. question. I mean, wave, wave them home. Watkins has become a bundle of indecision. <laughs> I mean, that sending Margot last night. Baldelli tried to defend him, Pat, but he for, first of all, he rightfully so retreated. That wasn't the sin. The sin was he said post game, I didn't expect to be sent, so he was slowing up. I mean, the, yes. this team is making so many stupid mistakes, starting starting with at least three well, games what? in which Rocco has made dumb mistakes. There's nobody out, and the guy gets a lousy jump off third. That's not a hard stop. That's not a, you know, I know you had a guy at third earlier in the game and didn't score him, and it's been driving you crazy all year not scoring guys from third with nobody out. But you can't send him. 
I mean, it was, I don't know what, it was like Tommy was saying, if he would have gotten a good jump, he would have scored, so damn it, I'm going to send him anyway and hope Jorge throws the ball in the bleachers or something. He was out by 12 feet. Wasn't he? Wasn't he? 12 feet? You know, it was it was ridiculous. I, I don't know. And that, you know, that could have been a 3-4 inning against uh, uh, Sale, which doesn't yeah. happen very often, and 3-4 uh, run inning, and they ended up with one, so... I, you'd like I, you'd like to think I told Judd this yesterday, Pat, after the game on a on a podcast that, you know, I I, I use the term pagand like Alcala in Texas pagand. You know, he, he had a horrible day, he gave up four yes. runs and surrendered the lead. And you know, sometimes the pagan game will happen to an individual in the bullpen. For whatever reason, that pagan game has turned into a whole ripple effect of bad decisions across the board, from the manager to the players to weird things that are happening. It has snowballed to your point from that that a performance from Alcala has just completely derailed things over the last week and a half. Uh, and uh, most interesting thing I read today was so Tuesday basically I went nuts when they didn't let Jason J- Griffin Jacks pitch a second inning, right? Yep. And Rocco defended himself profusely the next day. We're not going to wear him down. We're not going to, uh, you know, overuse him. And today what I read is, yeah, we might start using yeah, him for two good. innings in September. Uh, <laughs> what happened there, Rock? Did you realize that Did uh, management call you? Did the, the bosses call you in and say, Rocco, he'd only thrown 10 pitches. You, you weren't going to use him. Tuesday, and you didn't have to use him, and you were off. I mean, you weren't going to use him Wednesday, and you were off Thursday. Why didn't you use him? But it, uh, I think Rocco's a little flustered too. I think he's a little rattled yeah. by what's going on here. So, yeah, it's uh, it's tough, man. And, and uh, you know, what what are they mad at Brooks Lee for? Somebody said they're unhappy with him. What are they unhappy with him? Why the hell isn't he playing shortstop last night? And let Willie Castro play center field, and let's go here. You know, I like Austin Martin as an extra player, but when he when he gets overexposed as a hitter, he doesn't. Uh, they, they got him figured out. You know, he's he's uh, he's not he's not much of a hitter. I gotta admit that. So. Yeah. Well, know. well, see if the see if the twins can uh, hang on for dear life here. Meanwhile, new life across downtown Minneapolis, over the river. <laughs> national TV tonight, Pat. It's a Fox oh, game. Is it national. Wow. It's okay. like Fox I, Network, oh, I right? Didn't see the team, but who's the Jason guy? Benetti. Who's the who's the play-by-play guy? Never heard of him. Has he been there for a while? Benetti. Benetti. Is yeah. The guy? Jason Benetti. I, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I guess I don't watch. Uh, he's been with Fox for like two of, years now. I watched a lot of college football with the sound down, so maybe I, I didn't know who, who it was. But, uh, yeah, uh, it, a lot depends upon a quarterback from New Hampshire. If he's uh, if he's better than uh, the quarterback who's now the starting quarterback at Rutgers. And, listen, this North Carolina team lost its last three games of the year with Drake May as quarterback. Now they got Brad Johnson's son who got run out of two other programs. Uh, as their starting quarterback, and he's probably going to alternate with a running type of guy, right? That's what I read today. So I, I think they win tonight. And I'm not saying that uh, because I'm overly optimistic about the season, but uh, I, I think North Carolina is going to be bad, and uh, they're going to they're going to win tonight because Mac Brown's an idiot as a coach, and uh, PJ will outcoach Mac Brown. That's one guy he can certainly outcoach. <laughs> Mac Brown just turned 73 years old a couple days ago. 1951 birthday for Mac. Well, he retired for how long as a coach and then came back, right? To, yeah, he did. To, Studio to guy for a while. He, you know what? He found out being a fourth stringer on in some panel show on TV is doesn't pay as well as being a coach at a Power Five conference, which is now what a Power Three. <laughs> but uh, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I I think they they might win tonight. I'm surprised they're going to be close to a sellout. Huh? I didn't know the tickets were going pretty well. So if you look at That's Max, uh, his his resume the second time around at North because he was at North Carolina before Texas back in the yes, '90s, right. and that's how he got the Texas job. But uh, I don't think he's retiring until he finally conquers the Duke's Mayo Bowl. He's 0-2 okay. in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Oh. You got you, you got to get that one last pelt on the wall before you officially hang it up. Well, I haven't looked at their schedule, but did they have any games with those 
traditional Atlantic Coast rivals, SMU, Stanford, and California. Do they have any games with that? <laughs> Talk about as, as screwed up as all the other leagues. How can you be desperate enough to be in the Atlantic Coast and bring in Cal, Stanford, which bring nothing? Can we change the conference SMU? names? Can yeah. we just change that? It's not the Big Ten, okay? Can we just change it? Like, like, like sponsor it. I'm fine with that, okay? It's the CarQuest, uh, you know, <laughs> di- division, whatever the hell you want to call it. The Duke, it's the Duke's Mayo Conference. Duke's is what it is. <laughs> so I was talking to Randy Johnson yesterday. And he was in the office. I was in the office. And uh, the, ri- the writer, not the, the writer, baseball not, player. Not right. the baseball okay. player. And I said, what are they going to do? They can't have an 18-team standings and have a six-way tie for second place and tell us that the top two teams are going. What the hell are they going to do? And he's of the belief, and, and so it must be rumors being heard around the Big Ten, they get two more teams, and they go to four or five-team divisions, and then they got a four-team Big Ten playoff before there's a 16-team Big place. So you're going to ask these kids, these, these guys, these kids, these men, these well-paid men to play as many as 18 games? Just yeah. like it's gonna be, it legitimately is going to be longer for the teams that win the championship longer yes. than the NFL schedule. Yes. it's. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 Don't they, require them to go to classes. OK, can we just stop at the classes? Uh, yeah. Well, can we yeah, stop right. with the, you got to take a class, but, no, mo- but most of them aren't going to play football beyond college. So they, I would recommend that they still go to class to, you know, have if a job getting, when they're 23. If you think you're going to go play pro, don't, don't, don't go to class. Yes. That, that, well, I don't think you have to, you got 23 tutors now. Do you here? I got a question for you. Back when we used to flunk football players and basketball players out, do you think we got really smarter people going to school now to play football, or do no. you think, do you think, <laughs> do you do you think we're still stuck in a situation where the only way you can get somebody to produce a paper for you, if it's Jan Gangelhoff, who's a secretary, is that the only who's got one paper about the menstrual cycle that everybody can uh, turn in, or do you think we have about seven? people hand carrying everybody through everything uh, I, I think, I think option b and many more be. tools on the internet although yeah, yes the the faculty also has tools to like negate your tools that are maybe ai and things but yeah, yeah it's i'm sure i'm sure there's but, more support uh, let's put it that way yes very very much so by the and way hey really, last i gotta really, ask you, you know, this it's like swimming records. Every core, every semester, our grade points are higher than they've ever been <laughs> over the universe for every team. And yet you got the same, you know, dummies walking around you always had. So, yeah. so uh, last thing for you here, you know, Deion Sanders notably banned a columnist from yes. appearing at, you know, Colorado news conferences, whatever. Uh, seems a little bit insecure to me. How many Gopher football coaches would have banned Patrick Royce if the standards <laughs> were the same for what, you know what Dion is setting? Well, PJ wouldn't have to because I've only been to like three games. Uh, you know, <laughs> self-imposed ban. Since I'm not, uh, since I'm not a full timer anymore. Uh, but no, I, I early years, I, I guess I, I went a few times, not lately. Because I mean, why would you go tonight? Thursday night game. What do you want? Get. You know, if you lose, PJ says it's all on me, and if you win, it's a great victory. And uh, so, what? Why bother? And uh, I guess none officially, but it was a little uh, testy with uh, with Coach Brew, obviously, and it wasn't great. With uh, I know Coach Wacker got very upset with me once when they, who was the big running back from Creighton? Remember? Uh, Remember, Jed, oh, mid 90s, the big Carl run. McCullough. Carl McCullough, yeah. And I was on with Joe Schmidt one night and I said, Why in the hell would that guy go to Minnesota? <laughs> you know, because he had all these great offers. And and Wacky got a little upset at that. But, uh, and, and Smoke, I think Smokey Joe, I mean, way back, <laughs> way back, Smokey Joe. Uh, you know, he has a kind of a bad year that last year. He got beat 84 to 13. They gave up 55 more, five or more times, about five times, I believe. And they ended up being, you know, one in 10. 
And I saw him years later at a Sid retirement party, and he was still mad at me, you know. And I, 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 I bit my tongue and didn't say, Joe, I didn't give Nebraska eighty four. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else did. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe didn't. Uh, Joe was still not taking it well years later. But uh, I, I don't know. It's uh, yeah. People think ah, he hates college. Go for football. I. It was my life when I was a kid. The fifties, the sixties. I loved to go for football. Just had a lot of guys who made you not love go for football. Yeah. Although one guy. Now I go back so far. The one guy I was kind of mean to that I shouldn't have been might have been Cal Stoll, because he uh, he. You know, he was a great recruiter. He just had some bad, bad luck. And uh, and he was a good guy. I got to know him, played golf with him a few times later in life. He was a good guy. But uh, we had a couple run-ins, too, and I was just a part-time columnist then. I was covering baseball. So, yeah. anyway. Well, it's, it starts tonight. The the magical run starts tonight on Fox. Go, uh, go New Hampshire. Uh, let's see this New Hampshire quarterback line it up. Come on, let's go. Let's do it. Just a forward pass would be great. Uh, all right, Pat, we'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll recap Gophers, North Carolina. All right, guys. See you. There he is, Patrick Royce, Unchained, presented by Josh Arnold.